with Planet Zoo's anniversary around the corner, basically in just one week um, from when I'm recording this video. And yeah, we have no idea what the animal is. The previous two animals um, were the black and white rough lemur and the red deer. But can that really give any indication as to what this next animal will be? Not really, no, it can't. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically, the rules with these anniversary animals that the community and myself have sort of identified is they're easy to make. So that's step one. Two is that they're not the most marketable animals in the sense that they're not really going to be a good headliner for a new pack. Um, and they also have to be not too requested either. So yeah, so you got easy to make not to request it and can't really be the headliner of a DLC. So let's have a look at the animals that I have formulated here to potentially be our potential next anniversary animal. So first up, I have the Impala, a hyper common antelope species from Africa, um, common prey animal of many of Africa's largest carnivores, those being animals like African wild dogs, lions, leopards, and cheetahs and yeah it, it would be pretty easy to make utilizing potentially either the fallow deer rig or um the same rig as the springbok or thompson's gazelle um either way um this animal would be very easy to make and serves as lot number one <laughs> next animal is another antelope being the black buck Another animal that is pretty easy to make and would add to India's roster in the game. Um, this antelope is relatively highly requested. Like, it's not the least requested of all antelopes. Impala um, is pretty low, though. But when it comes to the black buck, it's an animal that many people would love to see and would probably welcome it. Um, some people are on the fence about um, having more hoof stock if the next pack turns out to be mountains and we get a couple in that um but hey remain optimistic like there's plenty of good hoofed animals in this world and black buck is one of them the males have these distinct um screw like horns and um these cheek um uh, fluffs that i've seen on a black buck up close once so that would be a unique facial feature and the males do look distinctly different from the females too. Um, another antelope and a personal favorite of mine is the Bontebok. The Bontebok was once extinct in the wild um, and has been since reintroduced into the wild in Southern Africa. So they, are, they have distinct uh, white markings on their faces as well as on their legs and their underbellies with a dark brown to light brown coat they're very similar in appearance to another antelope, the Blessbok, but Bontebok, with their conservation history, would be a great animal to see. And they are part of the Heart of Beast family. So, well, they're related to Heart of Beast. And we don't exactly have any um, as of yet. So this would be a new kind of antelope to get in the game. Um, the Gravy Zebra, of course, would be pretty easy to make, utilizing the Shavolsky's horse rig. Um, as yeah, these these zebras are quite different to the plain zebra, as they live in relatively arid environments and are also endangered. So that conservation presence would be very helpful for them. Um, another very obvious animal is a new giraffe. So the Maasai giraffe is the light, is the tallest animal on the planet, um, taller than the current reticulated giraffe, and almost just as common in zoos. So it, it, it would work as a good um, anniversary animal. And yeah, I would honestly love to see it. And I, I, think, it was, I think it was Leaf, he said um, in his anniversary speculation video that a Maasai giraffe's pattern is sort of like cracked mud. And I honestly couldn't agree more. It is a very intricately patterned giraffe and would make a fantastic anniversary animal. Bighorn sheep um, would utilize the doll sheep um rig and wouldn't be too different other than the colors and i think the size too 
but they would be a great representative of the Rocky Mountains and could probably um, be a good tease as to what the next DLC will be um, if it were to turn out to be Highlands. And um, yeah, Big Horn Sheep would be a would be a fun little addition as we don't have any Caprines um, in the base game and Big Horn Sheep would make a perfect addition as it is also a legacy zoo tycoon animal. Um, another somewhat legacy zoo tycoon animal is the African leopard. So they are part of the big five of Africa. The others we already have in the game. For sure it goes um, black rhino, cape buffalo, lion, and elephant. It's either elephant or hippo. Um, but leopard is on is on that list as well. So um, they would be a great animal to see in the base game as it would pretty much complete the big cats as um, we do have the Amor Leopard, but African Leopard is just that iconic that be foolish to miss it. Um, another animal, even though I would love to see it in a Highlands DLC instead of being free, um, would be the Spectacled Bear. I just think it represents the Andes too well to be excluded from a Highlands DLC. But if we were to get it for free, um, that would open up a slot in the Highlands pack for another um, another kind of animal. But um, yeah, Spectacled Bear would be a cool animal to see, utilising, of course, the bear rig. And it, yeah, it would add to the South American roster of the base game that is yeah heavily lacking. But the, the South American roster is lacking anyway, so it, it is the most um, biodiverse continent on the planet. So yeah, Spectacled Bear, that would be cool. Um, the first reptile on the list is the African Spurred Tortoise. Now, we do have two tortoises in the base game and haven't had a single one since. So I think that the third largest tortoise would stand a fairly good chance of being added to the game. They're pretty common in captivity and as a household pet, particularly in America. And um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen an African Spurred Tortoise myself and, would be a, and it would be a fun animal um, to get in the game. It wouldn't be too fast or exciting thereabouts but um they are from zoo tycoon 2 originally so yeah it would be a nice nod i think with anniversary animals it would be a great idea to like um be paying homage to what has come before so zoo tycoon 2 zoo tycoon 1 um, animals from those games that we still don't have just yet in, in this game um would be a great idea um, another reptile would be the Nile crocodile, the largest reptile in Africa and one of the largest crocodilians in the world, um, only falling short of the saltwater crocodile. But these would be fantastic for the for African river sections in your zoos as they, alongside the hippo, rule those waters. On the opposite end of the spectrum, um, another African crocodilian could be the dwarf crocodile, the smallest crocodilian on the planet. Um, yeah, it would be a great addition as well. Um, pretty easy to make using the Kuvia's Dwarf Cayman as a base. But um, yeah, either African Crocodile would be good. And although a Slender Snout Crocodile would be cool too. But I did pick a personal favourite uh, as potential for this one. That being the False Gariel um, or the Thomas Stoma. They, these guys would be perfect for some Southeast Asian sections of, the, of our zoos. And they just have a cool pattern as well. Those dark, those dark black spots, the um, browner um, patches as well. They're, they're a pretty cool looking crocodilian and would be fantastic to have in the game. One day. Um, another bear that has potential is the North American black bear. Um, a species with um, high variation in their colorations, mostly based on subspecies. But um, the American black bear would be perfect to add to the base game, to add to that North American um, side of your zoos. And as a kind of woodlands bear, as grizzly bears are sort of that higher boreal um, highland kind of bear. Whereas these guys are almost everywhere, like they're very adaptable creatures and can come in a variety of colours too. Get a Komodi bear in here. But um, yeah. That would be a great addition too. Uh, our first primate is the Barbary macaque, a species that was first introduced in Zoo Tycoon 2 in the African Adventure um, expansion. Um, it would be a very interesting species as it would be 
um, an animal that would be good with Mediterranean sort of plants if we were to get any. Although I think we do have a few already. But um, these guys are found in North Africa along the Atlas Mountains and have even made their way to Gibraltar. They've been there for a long time, but um, they are the only primates, aside from humans, that exist in Europe. Um, another species is the olive baboon. Um, I didn't include the Hamadryas or the Gelada, as those two are hyper-popular, but the olive baboon is a species that was featured in Zoo Tycoon 1, and if the baboons were to utilise the mandrel rig, they would just be, of course, a little bit higher quality, um, you would really just have to add a, um, a tail mechanic, and there you go. Um, you got a baboon. But um, yeah, Olive Baboon would be a fun addition to the base game, as the base game um, could, could use a baboon. Mandrels aren't true baboons. <laughs> they, they might be related, but not quite. Um, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> um, given that we have a red kangaroo, the two grey kangaroos, the eastern and the western greys, um, they're pretty easy to make in comparison to other animals that you might think. And given that a kangaroo is pretty much already marketed another pack, um, the grey kangaroos could be uh, viable additions for the base game. So I, I think um, either of them stand a pretty good chance of potentially making it in. Another marsupial that stands a chance is the southern hairy-nosed wombat. Utilising the same rig as that of the common wombat, I think the southern hairy nose, as it is I'm pretty sure more common overseas than the common wombat. Um, kind of ironic, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, these guys would be a nice addition to the base game as the Australian roster of the base game um, is really a, a few reptiles and a cockroach. So having a wombat in the base game would be pretty good. And the common wombat isn't really the major selling point of the Twilight pack anyway. So there you go. Um, Greater Rhea, as another South American species that could come into the game, is it would be our last ratite, as we have the southern cassowary, we've got the common ostrich, the north island brown kiwi, and the emu. The Rhea is the last of that group, and given how easy it is to make, just a um, South American ostrich, basically, um, I think it stands a pretty good chance, and if we weren't to get in, in the Latin America pack, um, that would free up the slot for another kind of animal, potentially. Um, another pretty co um, common animal in zoos and an easy animal to make would be the Sumatran tiger, an animal that is the is my favourite subspecies of tiger and is the only member of the Sunda Island tigers left. The other two, the Javan and Bornean tigers, both long extinct. Um, the Sumatran tiger is the last of that line and is also critically endangered. So completing the, um, tri the trio of the most common tigers in captivity in the base game wouldn't be too bad. And I would love to see if Frontier could give another crack at the tiger. Um, speaking of another crack at, um, Sumatran orangutan. We did just get brachiation for the Bornean orangutan. And who knows, Frontier could um, add some hanging fur to this um, Sumatran orangutan. Um, and utilize the brachiation to its full potential and ragdoll physics to long hanging hair. And yes, yeah, Smart and Rangatan, I think, would be a very cool animal to have. Um, the Gentoo penguin is a common species in captivity and would be our first animal in the base game to be coming from Antarctica. Um, King penguin is our other Antarctic animal, though they are mostly sub Antarctic and never really actually get to the continent. Gen 2 penguins, however, breed there. So they would be a nice addition to uh, give Antarctica some light in the base game. Uh, the Parenti is a large monitor lizard and the largest lizard in Australia. And utilising the beautifully detailed Asian water monitor um, model and um, rig, though it wouldn't be able to swim um, because Parentis never really see a large body of water in their entire lives. So um, utilising the, I've said utilising way too many times in this video. Okay, I'll say with the detail that Frontier put into the Asia Water Monitor Rig, I would love to see what they did 
with the Parenti's unique pattern. Um, I think it would look very cool. Um, another animal is the Stellar Sea Lion, which could utilize... Uh, I said it again. <laughs> um, which could um, have the California Sea Lion animations, but be a lot larger too. I think they're the largest sea lion in the world. And um, can spice up that Pacific Northwest um, sort of area of your zoo if you were so tempted to build one. Um, I think it would be a very fun addition. And having um, distinct size differences between the females and the males of the sea lions, that would be pretty cool. Um, another primate could be the tufted capuchin. We got the Colombian white-faced capuchin a long while back, back in the South America pack of April of 2020. And the tufted capuchin, I think, is more common in captivity and would be a great addition nonetheless. Um, many people have thrown out the idea of a potential walkthrough exhibit animal as our anniversary species. And what better than the Linnaeus's two-toed sloth? A very easy animal to make utilizing... Oh, okay. <sighs> Having the same animations as the brown-throated sloth just this one is a much more common represent, representative in zoos and is found almost worldwide um, in zoological institutions and I think would make a fantastic addition to our walkthrough exhibits. Um, the harbour seal is another pin of head that could be added. Um, using the grey seals animations, I think the, the harbour seal stands a pretty good chance and could add to that um, Atlantic Ocean representation. Um, the South American tapir is another uh, pretty easy animal to, to make. Uh, I'd just love it if they gave another crack at a tapir again and um, hopefully nail it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very similar to the bird's tapir, but um, is a bit larger, I think, um, and lives more on grasslands than the bird's tapir. Um, the Juanaco, very similar to the llama. Um, is one of the few camelids in South America. And, yeah, these guys would be a, a great addition to an Andean section of your zoo. Um, who knows, maybe even uh, having them alongside your llamas. But, um, yeah, these guys would be a fun little addition as they have some very cool calls. And one of our last animals is the Asiatic lion. So, Planet Zoo's lion has a lot to be desired. But I think if they were to do any other subspecies of lion, the Asiatic lion would have to be it. Because it is the only lion subspecies out of Africa um, to this day, as others have gone extinct already. So the Asiatic lion, it is pretty common in European zoos particularly, and I think would be a great anniversary animal. To see some cool main physics would be a um, great thing to see. And our last animal is the Owdad or Barbary Sheep, another species of the Atlas Mountains that I think could make a fantastic addition. I've seen them a lot represented alongside dromedary camels, so having them in the game would be a nice compliment to our dromedary camel. And that is all the anniversary animals I could um, think of and make this video moderately short. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, do you think any of these animals stand a pretty good chance of being our 2023 anniversary animal for Plant Zoo? Um, if you have any other ideas, do leave them in the comments down below. Remember, easy to make, not too marketable for a DLC, and not highly requested. Um, other than that, go wild. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more on the Red Panda Reggie channel. And I'll be seeing you probably when the anniversary happens. Bye-bye.